everybody! Welcome to this mini movie review. This review is on 2020's Come to Daddy. I've heard a little bit about this movie. I keep seeing it around on my Amazon Fire Stick menu, and I enjoy Elijah Wood in a horror movie, so I was like, yeah, I'll check it out. So Come to Daddy is a, well, it's originally a 2019 comedy thriller film directed by Aunt Timpson. I am reading a lot of this or getting a lot of my information off of Wikipedia. It stars Elijah Wood, Stephen McHattie, Michael Smiley, Madeline Sammy, and Martin Donovan. It was originally released April 25th, 2019 to Tribeca, and then was released in February of 2020 to United States, New Zealand, and Canada. It runs 93 minutes. It is a Canadian, Ireland, New Zealand, and United States movie. And from what I can tell by the summary, when I see the movie, I believe it's on Amazon Prime, it's like he's invited by his dad or he goes to visit his dad who he hasn't seen in a long time, if not ever, and it's things aren't what they seem. And I do like a movie like that where you're just going to show up for whatever and then it's all this other stuff or like there's something more sinister going on like in the town or in the house or whatever, you know, those are kind of fun. So I'm excited to see it. Like I said, I do like Elijah Wood in horror movies. I enjoyed him in Cooties, The Faculty, Deep Impact, I Don't Feel at Home in This World Anymore, just any of those kind of thriller type movies. I mean, I've watched him since he was a kid, as most people have. And of course, he made a lovely Hobbit in Lord of the Rings. So I'm going to go check out 2020's Come to Daddy, and I'll be back to let you know what I think. So this movie starts out, you have a guy named Norval, and that's played by Elijah Wood. And he's this musician, you don't really ever see him play music, but it's implied that he's this musician who has, he's had a privileged life, and he still lives with his mom in a Beverly Hills mansion, right? So they don't show any of that, but that's what it's implied later in the movie. So this is him. So it starts out, he has received a letter from his father, and he hasn't heard from his father in like 30 years. So he's like 35 in this movie. And it shows him getting dropped up at the like base of this woods, right? And he just has like a rolly bag with him. And I knew right away this, I mean, it said it was going to be like a comedy horror or comedy thriller. And I knew it was going to be at least some sort of dark comedy or something because in the very beginning of the movie, they had these like quotes um, about fathers and one of them was from Beyonce. And I was like, okay, that's cute. So that's fun. So he walks through these woods, right? And it takes forever. He hits like this beach and like there's this big old cabiny house that has like this um, porch deck thing that's kind of cool that looks over the, the lake or whatever there. It's um, on the coast in Oregon is where he's going. So he shows up at the place and his father's name is Brian and he knocks on the door and Brian answers. At first it's kind of weird. Like he's, he's very welcoming, but at first it like takes him off guard for a second. Like he almost forgot he sent the letter, you know? But he hugs Norval and he's like, come in, come in. And it starts progressing very quickly where the dad has a bit of a drinking problem and he starts kind of teasing Norval. And I didn't know what the whole problem was going to be. I kind of like, you know, going in blind and I'm like, I like to figure it out. But I knew something was up based on how um, Norval had this gold plated phone because he was like rich or whatever, you know. And there was only like 20 of them in existence. And Brian, the dad, was like, oh, let's take this selfie overlooking the coast. And they're on top of that porch or whatever. And he grabs the phone and Norval's like, oh, be careful. And then he drops it and it goes into the water and cracks and everything. And it's gone. And so part of me was like, okay, well, there's, there was a reason he wanted to get rid of that phone. Find out also that Norval had a bit of a drinking problem. He doesn't drink anymore. And there's a reason for that. And that might be why he also still lives with his mom. They didn't really say, but I kind of had the feeling that, like, he moved back in with her, but, I mean, maybe not. So they're sitting there, and Brian's asking Norv, just, what does he do? Elijah Wood gets all animated, and he puts in a pretty convincing story that he was, like, a DJ or something. He does producing. He does a little bit of everything in the music industry. And Elton John kind of founded him, and he knows Elton John and, like, all this stuff. And then Brian, the dad, used to be a driver for, like, a limo company, he says. And so he's like, oh, well, I know Elton. Yeah, I've known him for like 10 years. That's so weird that I know him and then my son knows him and he didn't even know. So he's like, well, let's call him. And it's like probably like nine at night or something. And there's this whole scene 
with this tension. It's kind of weird, but it does stand out. It works. And so Brian grabs the phone, like the landline. He's like, I'll just call Elton right now. And Norval is like, oh, no, don't bother him. It's fine. Don't bother. He doesn't like to be bothered this late. I told him I'd never call and stuff. And so eventually it comes up that Norval's never met Elton John. It's a lie. He was trying to impress his father. Brian also doesn't know Elton John. He was bullshitting on. They were both bullshitting each other. And it just kind of leaves this weirdness and awkwardness in the room because then they both just kind of sit with it in front of the fire at night. Norval stays the night. He hears his dad talking to someone in another room. There's no one there. Like he's sneaking around. It's kind of weird. Like the next day or so, they're out on this deck, the deck where he, the phone fell. And it's cool. It's like this like octagon, half octagon kind of thing with like this porch and a cover. And, and Norval basically calls out his dad. He's like, why did you bring me here? There's this whole, this whole rant where Brian uses the C word a lot, which that's fine. It's just, it took me off guard because I was watching it at my apartment in the living room and the front door is like right to my left. And it just starts going off like C word, C word, C word. And I was like, just turning the volume down, like just <laughs> like I wait until that was over. So he starts teasing Norval and calling him that and calling him saying just all this different stuff. And eventually Norval's like, I don't understand. What did you want me here for? It seemed like you wanted me here and you just keep belittling me and yelling at me and I don't understand. And so Brian then takes a meat cleaver on the deck and he's like going to kill Norval. But then as he goes to raise it, it's pretty comical kind of. I, la I laughed. He just has a heart attack and falls back straight on his back and dies right in front of Norval. So now Elijah Wood's like, oh shit. So he like takes the meat cleaver and like hides it. The cop comes and there's like a fun part with that. And he basically covers, he just says his dad, they'd been maybe arguing and then he had a heart attack. He doesn't say anything about his dad trying to kill him. So then this coroner shows up to pick up the body. And for some reason, there is a lack of space at the local morgue. And the coroner tells Norval, He's going to have to keep his father's body for a couple of days in the cabin after it gets embalmed. And I'm like, that's not right. You can't put it anywhere, like nowhere. There's nowhere else to put it. And he kind of has like a moment with the coroner. She's nice and they exchange numbers because he's like up there by himself. And she's like, if you need anyone, like her husband had passed away. And she, know, you know, she knows like she was trying to help him with the grief and stuff. Even though Norval's like, honestly, I hardly even knew my dad. He's like, I should be sad because that's my dad, but I'm not sure. Like, it's weird. And so they take his dad's body away. They take Brian away and they get him involved. And they bring him back in a black body bag and lay him on the bed, one of the bedrooms in the cabin. Then Norval's just left with his dead dad. And it's like, okay, <laughs> like that's crazy. And he starts hearing like noises and creaks throughout the house. And it's freaking him out. And there's a part where he drinks and he calls the coroner lady to see if she'd want to come over. She's like, uh, no. And he's like, oh, come on. You just come over and we can, we can just hold each other like naked or not naked, whatever, like ever. And she's just like, stop. No. So I was like, good for you. Don't go over there. It's too creepy. I'm like, she was just being kind. But it's sad too because he's like lonely and he doesn't know what's going on. And so then he goes and passes out next to his dad and he kind of implies like he had something he wanted to tell his dad his dad's body, you know, he's like, I know it's gonna make me sound like a horrible person, but I want to say something. But then he ends up blacking out and he falls asleep next to the body bag of his dad and he has pulled the zipper down. So it's just his dad's face and they didn't even close his dad's eyes. I'm like, come on, man. So he's just like staring up at nothing. He wakes up the next morning, Norval does, and he looks over and his dad's looking at him. And I was like, mm -mm. and I guess somehow he had, I guess the rigor mortis wore off. I don't know. So then he just like turns his dad's face back and zips up the bag. He's like, okay. And so now he's hungover and he's like walking around, like checking through the house and things like that. And eventually he finds this secret compartment, which I, have, I would have been looking through the dad's stuff anyway. I'd be like, I don't know anything about this guy. He's dead. I'm going to look through his stuff. But he finds a secret compartment in the wall and he pulls it out and there's this photo book. And he sees like his mom and he's like, oh, that's cute. You know, like my mom was young and me, I'm young. And he notices the picture of his father isn't Brian, isn't this guy. This other guy is not his father. He's an imposter. And that's when you're like, okay, well, things are kicking off then. So this Brian guy that he has met with who died isn't even his dad. And so he ends up finding on in that porch out where Brian had the heart attack underneath a rug, like he follows the sounds he hears and there's a hatch. So he goes down in the basement into the hatch into this like bunker area and there's his dad. So he's been tied to this pole and he's like been beaten the, the crap out of, you know, and he's like all bruised. And it's the guy who played the dad in the movie Saved, the pastor dad. So if you haven't seen that movie, go check it out. It's really fun. So he's immediately like, there's a guy coming to kill me. You're my son. Oh my God, I'm glad you came. We're going to have to kill him. And Elijah Wood's like, wait, what? Okay, first of all, this is a lot. I'm still hungover. What's going on? Elijah Wood like hides in this closet with a dumbbell, like a 20 pound weight. And this guy shows up, Jethro. 
and he's got like longish curly hair and he has like this pin that he has covered with his own feces and he's gonna stab the real Brian in the stomach and then he'll die slowly. So eventually the dad gives away that Elijah Wood's down there and he comes out and they all, they tussle and things like that and then Jethro escapes but says he'll be back. I feel like he would just take him out but I mean there's more to it. I mean they have a bit of a past together, these guys, so I guess I could see but it just seems weird that he wouldn't just kill him but it's like there's other guys I think who were setting what the rules were and Jethro was just obeying them so there's like this other kind of funny scene that's kind of gross where Elijah Wood or Norval has to free the real Brian and his hand's like in this handcuff and the real Brian's like you're gonna have to break my thumb so I can get it out and he's like are you freaking kidding me and so they break his thumb it's really gross and he's like that's not enough you're gonna have to break my first finger too or his pinky one of the other you know and he's like what and so they break the next one and it's like, ugh. and then they end up looking up and following the chain. And you see that it, the chain's just like hooked onto this hook that you could pull out and pull and unleash it. And so they just like unhook it and then the dad's free. So then they're running out and the dad's in pretty bad shape, right? Norval carries him upstairs. And so basically the story is, so his real dad left him when he was five years old, fled to Bangkok where he and a group of these three other men. So you got Jethro then you got this other man named Dandy. And then you have Gordon. Gordon was the one pretending to be the father who's dead. So the four of those guys kidnapped this daughter of like the richest man in Thailand, right? And they got a large ransom for it. Well, Brian decided to take that money and screw his friends over and flee. And he has been on the run ever since for 30 years, which I find weird. It's just a weird plot. These guys are going to follow him that long. And it's like this whole thing. And Norval's like, how could you do that? How could you be like that? You know, and he's like, well, how do you think... You had the life you had. Your mom barely ever had to work. And you had this great big house. Why do you think that is? So Norval's like, oh my god. This ransom money has been taking care of me and my mom for the past 30 years. So the problem is now Brian's pretty much out of the money. So he doesn't have any more money and these guys are after him. And Elijah Wood has to kill someone. He's never done anything like that before. And it's this is where like this second half of this movie takes a brutal turn. So he's fighting this dandy guy and he's like this large guy. The dad's like, do what you got to do. And he's like, okay. And so he takes this like barbecue fork, right? That you would use for grilling. And he like gets underneath dandy and he just repeatedly stabs him in the genitals like over and over. And it's really bloody and it's gross just over and over. And then he takes this plastic wrap and wraps it around dandy's face and suffocates him. And then beats him to death with the roll. Like it's, it's, and it's just the scene He's just like screaming out all his frustrations. Like it was a crazy scene. I was like, oh, oh, that's gross. So now Norval has killed Dandy. The only one left is Jethro. Dandy's dead. Gordon had a heart attack. Norval and Brian go to leave the house and Jethro shows up with the crossbow. So they like hide Brian and then Norval, uh, Elijah Will gets in Jethro's trunk and rides along with him. Why? I'm trying to remember why Jethro leaves. If I remember, I think he, he couldn't find them. And so I guess he thought they took off. I don't know. There's no other car. I don't know. I don't quite understand why Jethro leaves. I think he was upset too because like Dandy was dead and Gordon was dead. I think he just, maybe he just panicked. Jethro decides to go to a motel. He's going to hook up with this sex worker named Precious, who she's pretty fun. He's going to have this like BDSM type sex with her. Why now? I don't know. So they go there. And so Norval sneaks out of the car and he goes to the motel and he's able to get the motel keys and he's like talking to this guy who works there who's like obsessed with boobs or whatever. And then he gets like the spindle. There's like this metal spindle where all the little pieces of paper are on. So he takes that and he goes out and he slashes and punctures Jethro's tire so he can't get away. So then he takes the keys and he's wanting to sneak into Jethro's room, but he decides to go through like an adjoining room. Apparently there's like this sex convention going on in this seedy motel or whatever. So when he goes into the adjoining room, there's four people passed out. Three guys and one woman. They're all pretty much naked, are laying, sleeping, and the other guy's like in a chair. So like they did whatever they did. And so Elijah Wood's creeping in and he's like, hum, hum, hum. and he tries to like open the adjoining door and he like almost drops stuff and it's like, it's kind of funny. And then he can't get the lock to open and it makes too much noise and the guys wake up. Everyone's freaking out. The adjoining door opens. Jethro's there with Precious, the sex worker, and she's like choking him out or whatever. So Precious ends up holding Norval, and then Jethro takes that spindle and stabs him, uh, Norval, a bunch of times in the stomach, which is pretty gross. And then he takes the spindle and sticks it through his cheek, and like it's out his mouth. And so that's when the sex worker, Precious, is finally like, you know what, I, I don't want to be, you're going to kill him, and I don't really want to be an accessory to his death, so here you go. 
So she takes off, as does Jethro, just leaves him there. And so he gets in his car and takes off. And then that's when Norval gets out of the motel and he starts just walking down the street with this thing in his mouth. Like everyone's just in a daze now. We don't know what's happening. It seems a really weird way to go about killing someone. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know why they just didn't worry about getting out and going to a hospital or... Da his dad, Brian, seemed like he wanted to live, but then after he got stabbed, he just kind of gave up. I mean, the injuries were probably a lot worse, but it's like, it didn't seem like no one in, no one else had a car. I don't even know what road the coroner and Jethro and all these people came through because they didn't show it. He didn't come through on a road. The person who dropped him off in the beginning of the movie just dropped him off in the middle of nowhere, like on this side and let him walk through the woods because it was like this crude map his dad drew him. I don't know what he was expecting his son to do. So as Norval's walking down this the road, he sees that Jethro has crashed his car. Well, I mean, the wheels are gone. Like, so he's just like riding on rims. So he crashes into a stop sign or something and um, like a merge sign. And the sign, part of it has gone through the front window, but Jethro's not in there. And so Norval looks a little bit farther down the road and Jethro's just slowly walking down the road, right? And it's dark. And when he gets there, he's talking, Jethro's just walking. And he starts mentioning to Norval that Norval's mother was a sex worker herself, and Brian and Jethro both slept with her, which I guess is maybe implying Jethro could be his dad. I don't know. But I mean, I don't think Brian was really tied down to Norval's mom in the sense of them like being married. I think it was more just like him having a duty of being a dad and then just, you know, but then he couldn't handle it. And he just took off and just sent her money. But Norval never knew that. He just thought his dad abandoned him. So as he's walking next to Jethro, he sees that the sign that came through the car has partially decapitated him. So part of his skull is missing on the side and you can see his brain's exposed. And he's just still walking in a daze and you're like, oh, okay. So then Norval is hurt, bleeding from his abdomen. He takes out the spindle from his cheek and he just leans over, sticks it right into the open brain of Jethro and leaves it there. And Jethro says the word Arthur and then collapsed dead. And he just leaves him there. So, <laughs> so then Norval is wounded and but but alive so he starts walking back to the house where he left his dad and his dad's like down on the lakeside on the beach up against a um, piece of tree piece of driftwood and he lays down next to his dad and then the thing he wanted to admit to his father he finally tells the real dad he says he never let his mom get over him anytime his mom tried to be happy and meet someone else and move on with her life Norval made his mom and perhaps the future guy uh, their life a living hell kind of thing, like never letting it over. And I guess he was looking for forgiveness. I don't know why from him. And so that was his his sin or whatever that he felt was he made him a bad person. And then his dad, Brian, touches his hand and they zoom in on the hands. And that's the end of the movie. I'm guessing at least the dad's going to die there on the beach. I'm not sure. I mean, his mom, Norval's mom should be showing up soon. I'm assuming she'll find and they'll figure it out. But all the three guys who were after him were dead. It's been a, almost a 30 year long trail of, it's just, I don't know. And it seems weird. Why did Jethro go to this motel randomly? Maybe I missed something. For me, the movie was fun. I enjoyed it. I really liked the change, kind of like uh, uh, Elijah Wood's character getting a little more of a backbone and trying to figure out what was going on. And then the scenery was really cool. And that last part with the motel seemed to drag on quite a bit, so it seemed like it was kind of lagging. And the movie's only 93 minutes, so I don't know if they just used that to kill time, but all in all, I enjoyed it. I'm going to rate 2019's Come to Daddy out of phone calls to Elton John. So out of 10 phone calls to Elton John, I rate this movie five and a half phone calls to Elton John for Come to Daddy. So five and a half out of 10 is what I rate this movie. Thank you very much for downloading and listening and have a good one.